Hi, my name is Phil Wilkes, also known as Phil W Online, and I'm making this video as an introduction to a new plugin for Carrera called Fluidos, which provides fluid simulation directly within Carrera. My intention is just to give a brief overview to introduce how to use it rather than being comprehensive. So there are features in this that I won't be covering in this video, but hopefully by the end of it you'll have a feeling for getting started and I would encourage you to just set up some simple scenes and play with everything to give you a good feel for the plugin and then you'll be in a better position for using it in your own projects. So we're going to start by inserting a fluid domain so once you've installed the plugin you will get a new item on the insert menu called fluid domain and here it is and if we check the size of it you can see that it's 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet and its origin is at 000, 000. and I'm just going to scale that so we've got 20 feet by 20 feet and in order to keep it central on the scene I'm going to move that to minus 10 and minus 10. What I'm now going to do is to introduce two primitives to the scene. I'm going to start with a sphere which is going to be our water. So I'm going to raise that up and put it back over here. I'm going to try and sort of more or less center that and I'm going to scale it up but I'm going to keep it within the bounds of the fluid domain and very importantly I'm going to have to parent that to the fluid domain so you can now see that the sphere is parented to the fluid domain now if we go into effects now that that parenting is done we get this additional menu for using the fluidos simulation objects within the fluid domain can either be an obstruction um, an obstacle to the fluid or it can be turned into a fluid itself uh, this one we want to turn into a fluid so we're going to check this box here and we can give it an initial velocity but I'm just going to leave it as it is for now and to make it more interesting I'm going to add another object to the scene which will be an obstacle so I'm just going to move that roughly into position in the scene that will do and again we need to parent that to the fluid domain anything outside of the parenting won't be included in the simulation so if you've added something to the scene and it's not taking part in the simulation it's probably that you've uh, forgotten to parent it to the fluid domain okay so we've got our obstacle we've got our fluid we can just check the parameters that are set up for the fluid simulation so if we click on the fluid domain and again in if under the effects tab we've got various things that we can set up here my scene is running at 24 frames per second and you can see the simulation is also running at tw uh, 24 frames per second so that's what we want I'm going to let it run over four seconds so at 24 frames per second that's 96 frames so I'm going to put 96 in there and at the moment the grid size is 0.125 of a foot so that's going to give quite a a fine grid for this you remember that we set this long length to 20 so in, in order to do an initial fluid simulation I'm going to reduce that dramatically I'm going to just put 0.5 in there which will give us a, a rough idea of what the fluid simulation will be but it won't be very detailed the level of subdivision I'm going to leave at 2 basically the simulation is done on a grid of particles and it then converts those particles into a surface and this controls the subdivision level of that surface so the higher you set it the finer the, the mesh will be uh, but the more resources it will obviously take here you can set a force um, it's usually set at minus 32 on the z-axis or the z-axis which is a uh, gravitational force so that's set for normal gravity but you can change that or you can animate it as well um, so it does provide a, a way of setting forces into the scene I'm going to ignore diffuse particles for the moment I'm going to add that in later and that that gives additional detail to the simulation for foam and spray effects so we've now set up everything we need to start doing the simulation 
So we're going to kick it off. You can do that by going to edit and then this here. But what I normally do is just use the, the key shortcut. So have the fluid domain selected, use control shift F and it brings up the, uh, the fluidos control. There's a couple of options here. One is to choose the folder for the um, outputs of the calculation and another is to continue a previous state. So if, for example, I run this at four seconds and I don't, then it's not long enough, I can extend it to seven seconds and click, check that and it will only calculate the extra frames and not the whole thing again. And there's an indication here as to how much memory it's going to take up and you can see that uh, because I set the uh, parameters fairly low on this it's hardly taking up anything uh, but do have a look at that because if you set them too high it can get ridiculously high very quickly so I'm just going to click OK here because this is a new scene um, it's going to ask me where to specify the files are saved so I'm going to oops didn't mean to do that I'm going to click on my D drive and I've got one set up here called Fluidos video that I've created for this and you can see that I've got a number here uh, for previous things. The data is saved into external folders. It's not saved in the Carrera scene. So if you want to save the calculated data, you'll need to set up um, a separate folder for each simulation that you do. And you do that through the normal file controls rather than um, directly in Carrera. So it's here you, you can select it, click on OK, and you can now see the progress bar at the top there. And I'm not speeding this up, this is a real-time calculation. And it's fairly quick because we set the parameters fairly low. For every, if you double the size of the grid, you'll get an eight-fold increase in the calculation time. So again, beware of setting things too high because it's very easy to push it so that you get uh, calculations that last hours or even days. Anyway, you can see that the calculation has completed now. Um, but nothing has apparently changed within the scene. That's because what it's done is to produce the files, but we don't have a way to visualise that data yet in the scene. And the recommended way to visualise that data is to add another fluid domain in the scene. And what I'm going to do is make sure that the origin is the same position as I had before. So minus 10, minus 10 and 0. Leave the scale at 100% because it will have written out the data in the scale that you set the fluid domain. So if you rescale this, it will it will scale it up and it will look wrong. Uh, but it's important that the origin is in the same position. And now what I'm going to do to that, I'm not going to use this to run a simulation. I'm going to use it to visualise it. So we're going to add a modifier and the modifier we need is, is fluid S. And here we'll request the folder where you saved it and it's helpfully suggesting that we uh, select the folder that we just calculated. So the next thing to do, if I go to the end frame and make the completed percentage 100%, so go back to the first frame and we can check that that's at zero and all we need to do now is click enabled and you can see now we've got a fluid object in the scene and confusingly it's not in the right position and I don't know why. Let me just check the parameters there. So that's at minus 10, minus 10. Ah. It's obviously not taken that. Oh, I think I checked it at the, the end rather than the beginning. So now we can see that the the fluid object is in the same position as the, the original one. And I'm going to hide the original sphere. So just go to the general tab and, and uncheck visible. And now if I run the scene, you can see that we've got a fluid simulation going. I'll just run that again. So that's got some nice movement to it. I'm happy with that. So what you could do now is to increase the calculation parameters. So I'm going to set it to 0.25. So that's going to be 
eight times as long in terms of calculating it through doing that. And I'm also going to um, select the diffuse particles now so that um, it generates additional files which mimic the, the spray and the foam that would be created by that fluid simulation. And those are separate files to do that and it's, it requires a separate visualization. But I'll just run that. And what, I should, what I should say is when you set this, the, it's very easy to produce huge numbers of, of particles. So there is a, a slider here to allow you to set the, num the maximum number of particles that that will create. And I'm just going to set that to 50,000 because I don't want it to um, overpower the whole simulation. So again, I'm now going to do Control F and start the simulation. Because I'd already got a folder selected for the um, the resulting files, it writes it to that unless you you check it on the uh, the requester there. But I'm just going to let that run, and I'm going to pick up once that has uh, finished calculating. So here we've got our resulting scene, and if I just rewind that to the beginning and play it through. You can see that the surface of the the fluid is much more detailed now. But what we've not got at the moment is a visualization of the particles. And so we need a separate visualizer for that. And I found the easiest way to do that is just duplicate the fluid domain that you've got already that's visualizing the the main bulk of the uh, the fluid. Just duplicate that. And then under modifiers we now want to have that visualizing the diffuse particles um, those can be visualized either as triangles or as octahedrons I'm going to stick with triangles because it's lighter on system resources at the moment and I also want to allocate different colors to these surfaces so the main one um, you can drag in um, a shader I've got some shaders here that work in both Octane and Carrera's uh, native renderer. But I'm, at the moment I'm just going to turn this um, a blue colour. So I'm going to set the set a sort of darkish blue for the main surface. In fact I should have done that at the, f at the beginning rather than at the end. So not a problem, I'm just going to delete the keyframe for that shader at the beginning, drag that back. So now we've got the blue on the, the fluid object at the start and for this one I'm going to make it white. I should select that first. Make it almost white. You could also add some sort of alpha to it if you didn't want it to uh, uh, to be quite as dramatic. So if I now play this forward, and I'm going to do it with so that you can see each frame, because it uh, it wasn't quite running in real time before. So if I play that forward, then you can see at the edge there you're getting the sort of foam and spray effect in white which shows up well against the, the darker blue of the, the main fluid simulation. And you can isolate those as well and allocate different um, colours and textures to them. So once this has run through, what I'm going to do is to allocate some better shaders to them and render that out. And I'll attach the finished video of this scene onto the end of this tutorial. So I'd encourage you to start playing with the, uh, the plugin just by using simple primitives and simple scenes of the sort that I've illustrated here. It'll give you a much better feel. I haven't covered all of the 
the features so I'll leave you to explore some of those but uh, it's a it's a great plugin it's a wonderful thing to have um, it's one of the big emissions that Carrera hasn't had a fluid simulation so to have a plugin that does it and does it so well is a real boon for Carrera users